But I got a text from somebody. Y'all were playing at in um, it was uh, Raceland, uh, the uh, venue 182, I think it was oh, called. Yeah, yeah. Y'all were playing over mm-hmm. there, and somebody sent me a text. They, they was like, "Check this out!" And it was it, there were video in the stage, and it was the Notebook, and then the the stage yeah, dropped, uh-huh. and then y'all started playing. I was like, yeah. "Dude, that is so cool!" I said, <laughs> and I knew none of y'all. I didn't know uh-huh. any of y'all in the band, uh-huh. but I followed y'all when I, you know, I used to DJ in the clubs and the, the Homa Triangle oh, yeah, and yeah. all that stuff. The Abyss, were you the back Abyss. Then? Oh, I was yeah, the yeah. Abyss. I was yes. I was more yesterday. So you know Lenny. You yes, know Lenny yes. So I know, yeah, yeah. Where so will we'll be this Saturday night? By the way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, but. Uh, yeah, so it was kind of cool. I was like, damn, that's like a nod. That's like, Chee did the nod to me, you yeah. know? And I was like, yeah. yes, they could use whatever they want. And then it kind of, I don't know, it kind of spurred a conversation from there or something. You had text me and say, hey, you know. Uh, I, I, it might have been if we could use was relay, it. No, 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 oh, no. Yeah. It was Relay for Life. I think I reached out to y'all. Hey, yeah. man, uh, let's, uh, it and was we a couple did of it. years ago. Yeah. yeah, we did it. It yeah. was fun. Yeah, it was fun. And then it kind of just sparked more conversations between us we're trying to collab do all kind of stuff yeah. life gets busy and everything but uh i'm glad you're on the podcast today, well, we man. always watch your stuff like in the van or in the, now we've, we've well, now we got a bus so then we're right. on the bus but i mean the uh, hulk hogan win with, yeah. the, with, the, with the crawfish yeah yeah man <laughs> we brandon would throw that in one of the songs brandon dan they would trade off right uh, and they would do a couple of just lines go back that, you, and that, that you would do, and nobody in the crowd would get it. We just all look at each other rolling because yeah. we just finished watching it. Right, you know? right. So. Yeah, it was uh, it was always funny because uh, Brand- you guys would text me, bro. When the new one's coming out, because we yep. want to put it up on the set. And I was like, yeah. I was always trying to come up with something new just to please y'all. At well, one you did point. one. It was Steel Magnolias, <laughs> yeah. and, and you put us in there. I like, put y'all in we there. Got a plug. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like yeah, she was at Champion Square. We, you know, yeah. yeah, that yeah. actually, that dub right there actually was um, spawned from a conversation I had with uh, Todd. Gr- uh, graves at uh okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. so he was like man i love what you do is there any way you can kind of slide us in there and i was like yeah i'll see what i can do mm-hmm. and then the whole um you know the whole saints thing happened with the the, the, the minnesota miracle oh, it, yeah it's still bad yeah, taste in my mouth oh, yeah, yeah. so the next season that came out i said we need to do something to kick start the saint season right and refer to that play because it's right. still fresh in oh, our minds yeah. and i'm like Let's do Steel Magnolias. And then the guys are looking at me like, How'd you cover that? What the hell are we going to do that? I said, You know the scene with the funeral scene when she loses it? Mm -hmm. Let's let's do a play on it to where she's lose, like, she can't take the Saints anymore. Like, she's, I'm done with them, you know, after what happened. Uh And they're like, Okay. okay." So we put it on and we did it. And I was like, Let let me drop the cane. Like, Come on. We're going to Champion (laughs) Square. We're going to get canes. Chibis (laughs) is playing. You know, we did like that and it it worked. So we we saw it. Believe me, I shared it on my Facebook page for sure. You know, <laughs> it, was, it was good. So we're like, we're like you, like we're fans. Like right. you know, we, we follow all the stuff that you put oh, out. And, and, I, and it's so cool because yeah. I'm like, I fanboyed out on y'all too. Like, yeah. bro, they playing my stuff. That's Chewies. Tell me, tell me. Um, well, first off, tell me, um, tell me who you are. Let's introduce. We kind of got I'll into it. I'll say my name since say you can't your name. say it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, uh, man, Managini well, Panic. Very close. It's man- Joey Manjapani. That's so. uh, that's not Dulac, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> what that's from? That's Italian. All right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So yeah, Italian. I was. Feeling yeah. Soprano-ish there, yeah, right, you know? right? Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> how, how you ended up down the bar? Well, how did I get in this band? Yeah. I am down well, here. Well, yeah. So, so they were they were looking for bass player, and I was in a band with Chris, who was the singer at the time. Okay. Uh, a few years back. And you're from this area? Are you? I'm from New Orleans. You're from New Orleans. Yeah, I'm from okay. Metairie. All right. Yes. We're all at the time. Right. Chris, the whole band was from Metairie. Okay. And uh, he called me up, and he said, "Look, we're." We're gonna need somebody. Are you, would you be interested? Yeah, I'll be interested. This is a funny story too. Is this like early nineties? Uh, yeah, okay. I got I, no. I got in in two thousand four. So, oh, so this okay. is about late two thousand three. I didn't know anybody in the band. I only knew Chris. Okay. Like, we're gonna meet at Daiquiri Bay. And they were gonna interview me and another guy, and we could both play could play the parts. They knew that. It was, right. I think it was more of a long. Like we're talking about. Can we get along with this guy? How is it hanging out? Because being in a band, ninety percent is. Can you get along? Right. Because we can all play what we need to play. Everybody's for these songs. talented enough yeah, to every, care and stage correct. present, put on a great show. But, but you know, you need to be able to hang out off the stage you because need if not, charisma and karma with the band. Yeah, correct. exactly. Chemistry. Exactly. So mm-hmm. they interviewed this guy before me the night before, and according to the guys, like they gave him the, they pretty much told him you're in the band. Mm-hmm. And, and Chris, they, I, my nickname's Wolf. Everyone who plays music knows me as Wolf. That's, mm-hmm. a, that's a whole other story. But like, <laughs> like, dude, I already told Wolf. 
pretty much he's got it. And I'm like, well, we'll just we'll interview him, and then we'll just tell him after the gig. Well, I didn't know anybody. Chris is late as usual, and mm-hmm. I sit down. Is Dan, Matt, and it's Tom, drummer Rob, and uh, I'm like, I didn't know anybody. So we sit down, we start talking, and at the time. I was I'd smoke every once in a while. Mm-hmm. And I, I seen a Saturday Night Live skit where Martin Short fixed a lighter, and when you light it, it shoots up mm-hmm. like huge flame. Right. So we started talking about you know where I can do it. Uh, I had an original band right before, and I did a lot of singing and stuff, so I could help out with the harmonies. I was telling what I could bring to the table, mm-hmm. and we started talking about money. You know, and they're like, oh, we make this amount. And I took that cigarette and I lit it, and the flame shot up, and they all just started <laughs> rolling. They, they just all busted it, out. It happened. It was, it was a moment. It happened. Yeah, yeah right? I'm like, you know, I, I kind of yeah had there, and I just it was a spur of the moment thing. Right. I'm like, this will be funny if I do this, and right. they just all lost it. And they told me that was the turning point for me. They're like, the other guy had the gig. Right. When you lit that cigarette and that light, that flame shot up, you were in. Right. It was in. So Chris called me the next day. He's like, hey, you want to be in the Chewies? I'm like, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> so that's how I got in. It was, it was literally just a, a, a joke kind of yeah. thing got me in the band. They knew both of us could play the song. Right, yeah. right. So yeah. it wasn't, you know, it was just who can. You, know. you were the puzzle piece that matched their, yeah, uh, their yeah, yeah, I guess, the got, yeah, characteristic of the band, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. that's how I got in the band. But I remember, I, I, so so you kind of came in after the fact, after it started, right? Yeah, it okay. started, I think I want to say 1999. Yeah, know, it, was, 2000. it was. Or 2000, about three or four years ago. It was in the 90s, some like late 90s. Late 90s, because yeah. they got there, like in New Orleans, I don't think they were doing well, but they came out here in the home of Thibodeau area. And blew and, up, and yeah. They, they played the Abyss when Lenny owned it. right. And they were killing it. Yeah. And uh, that's how they really got started getting a following going. Right. I mean, because, I mean, Homa had that, they called it the Homa Triangle. It was an interesting little club (laughs) scene. It wasn't downtown. It was like in the, probably one of the worst parts of (laughs) town. (laughs) <laughs> but it was uh, it was almost like our own college town because they had like some apartments in the back and right. people that went to like Nichols mm-hmm. that didn't get dorms or anything they kind of they went there so that was like their little watering hole so right. I guess I remember they had the abyss they had visions they had visions yeah, yeah they had yeah. Um, yesterdays and I want to say they even had a strip club over there well, Whiskers it was called <laughs> that's, that's a good name <laughs> Whiskers yeah and all their all the strippers names were Rachel in there <laughs> Rachel. <laughs> Or Raven, one of them. I don't know, but uh, but it was a cool little area. Not the strip club that you get rid yeah, of that, but yeah. uh, it was a cool little night place because if you didn't want to, you can go to uh, the Abyss for live music, which mm-hmm. y'all were there right. a lot. Uh, you can walk over to Visions, get your DJ groove on, or you can right. walk if you. If you wanted a piece that night, you can go to freaking <laughs> yesterdays. Because <laughs> we called that the meat locker. You know, you go over there and just uh, get what you needed over there. there. But no, it's uh, I'm sorry. You know, but, but anyway, that's what it was over they just there. Joke, it, yeah, it's, it's just jokes. I'm DJ Red. But um, but no, um, that was kind of like the club scene, and y'all made a big name yeah. for yourself right there. I got in right after they stopped playing there, and they had moved somewhere. I don't know where, but we. I had, did have a band that opened up for them at the Abyss. When I walked in, it was a thousand people in that right. place. I'm like, geez, you know. I know they opened up for Warren and a bunch of other David yeah. Lee Roth and they were rolling, yep. rolling through there. They they had, you know, all yeah, they had a little concert spots. series uh, for a while there in the uh, early 2000s. Like, yeah, I think Eddie Money came through. You know, uh, we played with him. But yeah, oh, really? Yeah, yeah, we played with him in uh, in Canada. They had some kind of festival. Uh huh. I mean, we've been on some pretty good builds with like Journey, Sticks, Al Green. Yeah, we wrote in a Good time we rode. We normally don't ride in on floats. It's a long ride, mm-hmm. and you know some of the guys don't like it. So it's it's all a voting thing, right? Thing. But uh, we rode with Kid Rock one time. And, oh wow! Oh man! <laughs> <laughs> I bet. Oh, man. I bet. Like it's like you yeah. could probably have a you you could do a podcast well, and a we, half on stories yeah, on that. Yeah, we just brought one crew guy just to hand us drinks the whole time. That's all you know. <laughs> you can just sit here and just hand us drinks so we can't stand anymore. Yeah, isn't it weird that you know the stuff that you do? Like you're you're, you're a musician and you. You know, y'all, y'all big with Chiwis. It lends itself to opportunities that you're like, what the hell? Like, yeah. I, I'm a little, like me, I'm a little dude from Chauvin, okay, down right, the bar. Right, yeah. And I act the ass on Facebook. Right. And one year, I'm the grand marshal of a parade, and right. I'm riding on a float with Ron White. Like, Oh, that's all. Awesome. Uh, yeah, yeah, and I'm like, how the hell oh. did I get to this point? You yeah. know, and I'm taking pictures with this dude and, yeah. you know, having a normal conversation with a guy that I see on TV on Netflix. It's, you know, it's like... What the hell? Yeah, no, I, I totally get it. Because growing up, you know, you watch these bands, listen to these bands, and, you know, then we're hang, you know, hanging out with Sticks and right. talking to those guys or the guys in Journey. Or, so it, the guys kid, you looked up kid to. Kid Rock when you were came little. down, you know, he came, we were going down St. Charles Avenue. This is a funny story. We had a fill-in drummer that night. A guy couldn't make it. 
And um, his hit was All Summer Long, I think, was uh-huh. the name of it. And he comes from the top, and he comes down, and everybody in St. Charles, it's, it's you know, 10, 12 rows deep. And he's yeah. like, he goes to the drummer, All Summer Long. He goes, what's that? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Kid Rock goes, play Sweet Home Alabama. Yeah. I got it. Two, three, four. And we just roll Sweet Home Alabama. Because that's what the song that's is. That's it. And the drummer that's had it. no idea. What's oh that? My God. Play Sweet Home Alabama. It's got Sweet it. Home Alabama mixed in with a little Werewolves of London yeah, a little yeah. bit. Like that little yeah. progression. The, but the chords like, don't change. So no, we just played the whole thing and he did the whole thing. But dude, he, he's like, what is that? And he was like, just play Sweet Home Alabama. Got you it. don't know Kid Rock? I mean, come on. It's a popular summer song yeah, right, right now. All summer long. Oh, yeah, man. The, the, yeah. The, those stories, I'll never forget. Yeah, the, the story I had with Ron White, we're talking to him, and he's, dude, he had a rough night, okay? I mean, Ron White, the dude drinks. He's wood. always having yeah. a rough night, right? He's always doing that. He's got the cigar, and he's, well, he switched from, I think he drank scotch at one point, but now he has his own tequila. Oh, so he's got tequila. Yeah, so now he drinks tequila on the rocks. And I'm talking, like, some powerful stuff. The three uh, he has, he has, like, a, a, a clear one, kind of like a gold one, and then he has a dark one. Yeah. He's drinking the dark one, uh, like, just on ice. With a cigar. And I'm like, oh, my God, this dude has like got a cast iron stomach. Well, he's sitting there, and he's like, I need food. I need food. I mean, he looks like he was been at it all night. Right. Comes in. He's eating like the uh, – Rouse has brought like this tray of sandwiches. I love me some Rouse's, oh, man. dude, he's just like – he's he, he's engulfing them. like, <laughs> And then um, he's sitting there, and he's like, man, this is pretty cool. Yeah, da, da, da. And then all of a sudden, he's standing in front – of the stairs. Now, you know a double-decker float. Those oh, yeah, stairs yeah, yeah. are like uh-huh. this, yeah, yeah. okay? Well, they got some cuyos on top. They getting drunk. Well, this guy <laughs> steps <can't> back. <laughs> yeah. He steps back, and he just falls straight down. Well, Ron White's right there. He falls <laughs> on top of him. Ron falls onto this huge tray of jello shots, okay? <laughs> jello shots everywhere, all over the beads. His back is completely covered in jello shots. I'm like, oh, my God, this guy is going to be pissed. Like, right. you know, because I'm just thinking he's like a movie star. He's just, yeah. that's what they do. Yeah. He got up, he went, he was like, God damn, I didn't even be mm-hmm. five minutes on the float and y'all ready to party. Hell, give me yeah. it. He just, he just made, I'm like, oh, my God, I thought he was going to sue everything. <laughs> no, he just kind of got his liquid courage. Some and went got, like, yeah, some of them really down to earth. Like, you know, yeah. like I said, Kid Rock comes down and does some songs with it. He didn't have to do that. Yeah. It's a good time. Yeah, you exactly. Know? Like, you know, he's, uh, He's not too big for the moment, you know right, what I'm saying? Yeah. He's like he stripped down and get down, you know, yeah. with the best of them. So I like that stuff, those stories. Yeah. But um, tell us. Uh, so the band kind of evolved through the years because I mean I see I, I kind of see every time I went to a different. Uh, I wasn't a groupie of uh, <laughs> Chewies, but every time I would go, we'd make a big. You know, y'all would play at like uh, rocks. Uh, is it rocks? Yeah, in, right, um, yeah, rocks. And the casinos. We never. Man, I tell you a funny story. We'd never even been to. I think it's Baldwin, right? Yeah, right, yeah. yeah. So. We had never even heard of the place, and they called us up, and um, we're like, okay, and we threw out a price, and they took it, and mm-hmm. we're going upstairs, and, they, and we're like, never been out here. And right. The guy's like, well, like, did they sell any tickets? He's like, it's sold out. We're like, sold out? <laughs> How many does it hold? 800 or 1,000? Like, it's yeah. sold out? Yeah. Like, we freaked <laughs> in out. In the middle like, of nowhere. In the yeah. middle of nowhere. Yeah. And it is a great venue. Dude, it's and, awesome. Uh, we did well there for years, so they stopped really doing bands. Well, uh, they uh, they opened up the hotel over there now, yeah. so um, we went... They got a big banquet ballroom and everything over there, so yeah. I, I don't know if they went a different route or if they went more DJ-ish, but I think once they start opening up, they're going to get some more bands. But the, I remember I was in a VIP section, yeah. and y'all were playing, and uh, there was, like, nobody in there. Like, but <laughs> Thanks. It, no, but it wasn't, it wasn't y'all's fault. It was like... It was crazy. I don't know what it, what it was. Like, just nobody did, went out that night. I don't know what it was. Y'all got gigs like that where you're, like, pumped up, oh, and then yeah. you're like, yeah. holy crap. Like, yeah. I'll play in, the, you know, some, and yeah. I'm like, nobody, there's two people here. And I'm like. We've had, yeah. You know? We've had that happen a couple times, especially when you're trying to break it into a new market. You kind of got to build it. Yeah, up. yeah. But I've been yeah. I've been to Rocks where y'all played, and it's like, yeah. we had to sit at the top because yeah. it was, like, packed on the floor, you know? It, so It would, sometimes it would get crowded late. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, because it was an early show. I remember. I think we'd play nine to eleven. Yeah, and, and the, people the, don't go out till no, ten, ten thirty. Yeah, they don't get know? cranked so, up till about mean, that time. Um, so you know, yeah, we, it was a good venue, really right. nice venue to play. But when yeah. I when I went uh, when I went there, Chris was was singing. Yeah. Okay, and I I you I don't know if you remember this, but I'll always remember this. I will always remember this. We are at the top. It's Did he fall off the stage? No. Okay. Because that, that was once. singing. Yeah. Well, <laughs> he was singing rock star. 
Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. And he w- he was like, "Those right. lyrics could not have been right." Uh, okay. Okay. So he he starts. He goes, "I'm through with standing in line." And then he forgot the lyrics. There you go. See. And <laughs> and he you. stopped. And then he went, "Oh wait, hang on, hang on." And he told y'all to stop playing. Yeah. And I was like, I, I was in a band at that time, and I was like, "Oh man, you never do that." Right. But then I was like, "Wait, he's gonna do something funny because that's the kind of guy he is." He went, "All right, I screwed up. Everybody, yeah. put your fingers up like this." Yeah. And he said, "A big f you." Yeah. And then everybody, he took made everybody say f yeah. you to him and then they started off the song i don't know if you remember that but i remember that um <laughs> i don't remember it but that's part of uh coming to see the band right it, back then it was um i think now we don't mess up as much yeah. or, or, or we won't stop in the middle of it that was you about know, but, 2005 2006 yeah, that's kind of when i kind of got in the band yeah um not that it yeah, was we your would fault. Stop, but that was kind of, I mean, I, I think that's why a lot of people came to see the band. Was right. What's going to happen next? Kind of a, kind of a, exactly. You didn't know what you, you were going to get. You were going to get. So, yeah. I mean, we still, we'll still, every once in a while, start a song. And that's how we would learn songs at work. Chris would start something or the, Matt will start something. And if the crowd sings it, oh, maybe we should learn that. Yeah, one. yeah. And if they don't, maybe we should just not learn that. Right. <laughs> keep going. Right. <laughs> I mean, just, just give us the middle finger. We'll exactly. keep going. You know, <laughs> well, I mean, go. one of one of the crowd, uh, you guys play Jump like yeah. no other. We still you guys, do it. Yeah, you guys play Journey like Don't no other. It. I love that <laughs> stuff. But those are the party anthem songs that, I mean, but look, you probably... You're, you're probably like me. When you're in a band, you're like, God, dog it. I don't want to play that freaking song again, but that's the bread and like, butter. This you is, know? Th- that's the gig. If yeah. you're getting the Chewies, you got to know that these are songs that we're playing. We've been playing them since 2000, whatever, yeah. 1999. And there's a core that we've held on to. Mm-hmm. You know, Living on a Prayer, yeah. you know, Don't Stop Believing, all the songs that people expect us to play. And I, right. t- I tell the guys in the band it's a lot, like, we play them a hundred times a year, yeah. but those people who come see us, they don't go out a hundred times. No, they, 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 they see them twice two a year. or three times a year, yeah, so yeah. it's all fresh to them. So, right. I mean, you'll know this, but playing the songs is is supposed to give you that energy to like. You don't think Bon Jovi's tired of playing "Living on a <laughs> yeah, Prayer" exactly. and "Dead or Alive"? Exactly. It, but he probably don't turn around. To the, well, he might turn around. The guy's like, "Oh, <laughs> "Living on a Prayer," two, three, four. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah. he's stuck. Exactly. You know? He's it, lucky. He's got more than one hit. You, know, there's those bands that have one hit and they're right. playing it. Forever. Yeah, you know? it's yeah, like a, it's a one hit wonder band. What would that be like? Huba Stank. I'd hate to be Huba Stank <laughs> right now and play the reason all my life. Let me tell you what. <laughs> they called it, whoever owned the club at the time, they came through Homa. Uh-huh. And, and they called, the owner called us to open up, but we couldn't do it for some reason. I mean, it it uh, was probably the Phases that owned uh, the City Club. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. It was, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh-huh. yeah they, uh, it, when you came up the stairs right yeah. here, that was all the memorabilia from okay. that club. Yeah. So when you when you go down, yeah. you could check it out. But yeah, they, they had all kind of bands roll through. But then, um, so after that kind of thing, uh, I went to see y'all again, and then Todd started singing with yes. y'all. So, um, and that kind of went. So Chris left in 2010. Um, Todd had filled in a couple times. We never even had a practice ever with Todd. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, started kind of on a whim and filled in great man we started we um we, we started playing at lake charles a little mm-hmm. more we started you know branching out a little bit and he was with us for two years then he had a country band before right he, at that time he just wanted to go back and do country he like kind of had a little following that yeah kind yeah of and the he wanted to go do country stuff so he left and we got brandon for a right. band um everyone knows for a tradition dude can sing high pitch he sings yeah, everything he sings, man he, yeah. and he plays everything dude is so talented man yeah like, he could pick up a guitar, bass, yeah. like drums, Drum, like yeah. <laughs> when he got in the band, like I can play the dude a G it, chord, you know, right. and I'm like, what? <laughs> let me take it back for. We hired Brandon when I was in the band. He played sax. Speaking of playing all right. the instruments, so we hired him for. He was probably played. He played sax and guitar for us. He was probably in the band for a couple years, and then um, I don't know what happened. He left to go do his own thing. He's mm-hmm. part of the Brandon Forey band. So when Chris left, we didn't even think of calling Brandon because he had the Brandon Forey band with us. Doing so his we, thing. We got Todd. When Todd left, we called Brandon Brands. Like, dude, I thought you were going to call me in 2010 when Chris left. And we're like, we just figured you were doing the Brandon yeah. Ford thing. He's like, dude, no, I wanted to be in the band. Mm-hmm. So he he got in the band f- and he left, I think, 2018 because Ryan. He left right up. after y'all did the uh, Relay for Life thing. Yeah. yeah that, then that, Todd came yeah, back. Yeah. In on. October, I think he gave us the end of the year. We're doing it. I don't know if we we're playing uh, in Lake Charles at the casino and for a Halloween event. And he's like, man, and he shut the door like, oh, boy. He's like, yeah. And I tell you all this, and we're like, ah. Oh, yeah. Like, and look, it's his brother, you know. Yeah. I get it. We all got it. We yeah. didn't like it. But, 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 right. But we're all good friends. I'll talk to Brandon once a week, you know. Yeah. As, you know, it's as, hard, man, because when I was in yeah. Rochambeau and I had to tell those guys, like, I'm, I'm having babies, I, it just, yeah. my heart's not in it anymore. It almost feels right. like work now. It breaks that's, your heart. That's what. You know what I'm saying? 
but the good thing is, you know, I don't want anybody in the band who doesn't want to be in the band. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you're not you going to give it 110. I wasn't mad. I wasn't mad when Todd left. I wasn't mad when Brandon. I mean, I was upset because, you know, you got a good thing going. Yeah, yeah. And look, I, I tell the guys in the band, and they all know, I'm like, no offense, but the singer is a singer. Like, it's, it's, I, the singer I, could, makes I, could, it. I could disappear and yeah. no one would even notice. Right, right. Drummer, <laughs> guitar player. You, you know need what I'm saying? a good like, front the, man. The, you know. <clears throat> yeah. And, and for us, that's the, that's the thing. It's fine. A front guy, like, we can find a guy who's a great singer, mm -hmm. but we're not that band. You know, we need 70, entertainment is 75% and playing the right song. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, not that Todd and Chris and Brandon all weren't great singers. Right. They, they all were. Right. But they also know how to work the crowd. And exactly. Get the people involved. Because we can get a, a singer just to stand there and sing and sound just like Steve Perry. Mm -hmm. But if you can't work that crowd and get the drinks in the air and know how to sell it. Yeah. And you know that's not that's not what we do. You're you guys are like an event band. You Correct. guys are like, we're, you, you, like a, yeah, we're, we're you're not a sit down band. Look, oh, that was a nice song. Let's go chank a chank. Right. No, y'all yeah. like you get yeah. the crowd involved, yeah. fist pumping, and mm -hmm. you know, and that's why that's why I got hooked on the y'all. You know, y'all. Um, and, and it's weird because in in that kind of era when y'all kicked off. You had other bands that kind of went on. You had the Molly Ringwalls. Mm -hmm. You had yeah, the Back of Donuts, yeah. you know. So you guys know those guys and oh, kind of yeah. rip off I, of I each other. To, uh, I went to high school with um, the guitar player for the Bag of Donuts, Jonathan. So I've been knowing Jonathan forever. They were really the first band to dress up in New Orleans. I got That you. I know of. I mean, they might have been a band called Top Cats. They would kind of get a little goofy mm -hmm. and stuff and dress up. But the Donuts were the first ones to really come out and just not give, oh, you know. Yeah, what? yeah. The singer had toast on his head. He'd come roller skating in. Yeah, with the you big... Know, Pads and the yeah. football pads I was like, on. What the hell is yeah, this? Yeah. Then you had an eight foot monster like uh, uh -huh. the Kiss guy. Uh, uh, that's, that's Jonathan. That's Jonathan. That's okay, Jonathan. all right. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, he's and they've all kept those identities. You know, I mean, since they kind of started. Oh, they stayed know, true so Jonathan to Jonathan says the Gene Simmons guy, the bass player is the Joker. Uh, Kevin the drummer has like a David Lee Roth to eat him a smile. Yeah, bass going. So um, they, yeah, they were the kind of the first ones, and then the Chewies kind of came along mm -hmm. and started doing it. You know, it's funny because everyone will compare us to Molly's to the Donuts because we all mm -hmm. dress up a little bit. Right. Like, but the Donuts, and we don't play any of the same songs. No. Like, I mean, they, we are, like, because they needed a fill in one night and called me. I'm like, dude, I would have to learn all your songs. Right. I'm like, I don't even I know about five of them. Right, right. You know, but it's just, uh, I guess, because we're all from New Orleans, we mm -hmm. all dress up and. We're all at that kind of party. It's a party town. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's kind of like that masquerade type thing. Yeah. Throw, throw a mask on. It's the mystique. Yep. side of it the you yeah. know the spooky voodoo side mm -hmm. of new orleans and y'all yeah. make it work on stage you know yeah we uh it's it, it, it took a while um for new orleans for some reason to catch on like so we came out here mm -hmm. and just started rolling and stuff the donuts took off in new orleans pretty good right you know but we kind of you know well i mean you <laughs> You got a band that's playing some really good cover music, and they dress yeah. up. I mean, that's, young, good-looking guys on stage. You know, yeah. they like it's like you don't see that in Homa. You had to go to New Orleans to see that, right? So I think that's so what we kinda... saw. I guess they were like, well, "Let's bring it to Homa." Yeah, y'all was selling I don't even New know Orleans how, to know, Homa before I got in the band. I don't even know how they got in there. They so last call we would just crush it. Oh last yeah, call. I mean, last call. Y'all went. Well, it was Bullwinkles when I went. When oh, I was okay, going, yeah. yeah. When I got in the band, it was last call, and I mean, when I got in the band, probably one of my one of my first gigs and they're like, it's going to be crowded tonight. And there's a line around the corner. What's oh yeah. Going on? Oh yeah. Cause I, I hadn't been on the road with them yet. I just, I played the first gig I did with them was January 1st as a sugar bowl gig. Mm -hmm. And it was us in the donuts right outside uh, the dome. And I drank every once in a while. This is 10 in the morning. These mm -hmm. guys are getting vodka. Slamming and I'm it. like, what are, you, what, are you, what's, what are you doing? And they're like, we drank. I'm like, I'm like, it's like 10 a.m. Yeah. yeah, we're running late. I'm like, what? Yeah. We're running late. You better you we drink up, stop. drink like, up. I'm trying to remember the songs I had to learn. Because like, they did some medleys and stuff that I didn't know. Right. So I'm like, I'm like, I just need to get I was just waiting for about four months to get down the line. So I had everything down. Mm -hmm. you, know, I, I, you know, I knew some of this. I knew most of the songs. A lot of them were, like I said, medleys that I just wasn't familiar with. So right. I, I didn't want to be a guy who was messing up. Yeah, yeah. You No. So. You're the guy that's drunk on stage and you're like, bum, bum, bum. Right, like, yeah. <laughs> so I, I didn't get drunk till later on. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, like, I'm, I, I, I try and pace myself now. I'm older. Oh, so, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I've never I've never not made it through a gig where I got so destroyed, you know, but I've I've had some guys that, you know, I'm dan you're dancing, singing, and all of a sudden yeah. they hear, boom, 
and I turned that, and the, the keyboard player's got his face on the t- <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, oh my god! <laughs> you sure you wanted? You sure you wanted the Chewy's kick? Yeah. <laughs> Probably, Just kidding, Dan. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's we've uh, all but, been there. Oh, we all get excited, man, because your adrenaline's pumping. Yeah, yeah, shot, 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 shot. Man, it is. Oh no! But then when everybody goes home, you're like, oh, yeah. uh, the party's still going oh, yeah, on in yeah. your head and your stomach, you know? Oh, so. it, yeah, that ha- yeah. Um, there's been many a nights. Uh, well, you're like, why I did that? Yeah. I'm yeah. never doing that again. Yeah, it's probably the last time I play. <laughs> yeah, it's every time. It's yeah. every time you play. You I try and pace it. myself. I'm like, you know, I don't have a drink to like 30 minutes before I go on. I'm as I got it because if I saw it too early, right. I got to I got to make sure I at least do this little trick. If you if you if you don't trust it, yourself, do this little trick, and it works for me every single time. I take about four ibuprofen. Okay. Okay. Take five, four ibuprofen. Dr- chug a water. I, yeah. Chug a water. Then. In between any drink, if you do a shot, chug do another water. water. And then, like, uh, if you drink a beer, drink a water. D- do a water in between everything. That helps. Dude, you feel so much better and, like, you I have done more that. energized a little bit. You to know? be honest with you, the last three or four shows I had done it, I, I think we had a few show, shows during COVID that were just like small little deals. And I think just being cooped up and not playing, I wasn't probably in the best state of mind. So yeah. when I go to a show, we got a bus. And to me, that's like, like you're on a cruise because mm-hmm. my, my bunk is right there. Right. Why can't I just drink? Oh, I can't. I can exactly. super smash. I'm not drive anywhere. I just go in there and I, you know. So I Chill was feel, I was feeling bad a couple times in the last probably three or four shows. I'm like, all right, when I if I do a drink, I'm slamming water up there. Yeah. The bad thing is I got to pee and then you know yeah. about 30 minutes left in the set I can't move. I'm yeah. acting like I'm dancing. Yeah. Look at people I'm like, oh god, I'm dying. <laughs> I got to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Yeah, 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 squirming like that. Yep. Barrel, narrow, and narrow, 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 That's yep. awesome. Uh-huh. Well, look, um, you don't only do the gig thing. What you do during the day? Like, what's your I'm day real, job? I'm a realtor during the day. Okay. So. How long you been doing that for? This is my, this is starting my fifth year. Okay. Yeah, All right. So I, uh, I moved this subdivision in Kenner 2017, and the broker is, a, is like a gated subdivision. And uh, there was one broker, and she lived in Slidell, like an hour away. And okay. she's like, look, I don't feel like coming out here to show these lots, to show these new houses. Go get your license, you know. And I'm like, well, she took me took me a little bit to, because I had, had taken a test since college. Like, right, and right. I, I wasn't the best test taker, <laughs> and so I'm a musician. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah, that was your only source of income was the musician thing yeah. before that? Dan and I had started a little company called Weezer Entertainment. I still have it. Oh, okay. That would book bands that kind of went under. Yeah, <laughs> year, oh, okay. You know, kind of fold, <laughs> yeah. fold it up. Yeah, I, I don't even deal with it anymore. I, kind of, I shut down the account and everything. Yeah, I even so, worked the tax write-off. <laughs> right. I didn't take anybody to lunch this year. I didn't know that. I can't write that off. I ain't itemizing this Roots, year. Roots, what? Forget it. Yeah. Yeah. Roots, what? <laughs> um, so yeah, um, she talked me into it, and it was really. I'm glad she did because mm-hmm. uh, you know it's it's a good. It works for me because I can kind of you kind of schedule your own hours. I mean, you got to right. work with clients or, or or you know work with them a little bit when they want to go see houses. But mm-hmm. it's, I mean, it helped me out last year. Yeah, you know, for yeah. sure with with no music going on. Right. Interest rates are great. You know, you missed yeah. The, well, missed I, the um, yeah, I um, in 2001 I worked for Wells Fargo Financial, mm-hmm. but that was more of like. Um, you go to the furniture store, same as cash. I right, bought a contract, right. and then I try to shove every high interest rate credit right. card down your throat. Right. I was the dude that called you at night. Hey, how you doing? You know, uh, <laughs> you want a credit card? You want to consolidate? I was that dude. Yeah, that guy. Yeah, that's how I started off, and then um, I I couldn't sleep at night putting those people in those ridiculous type of loans, and right. I was like, man, I just don't want to do this. And then uh, eventually, I moved on to Chase, and I did a loan officer there. So, but I got to tell you, and it, I. I didn't like working with realtors when I was a loan officer. <laughs> no, <laughs> because it was always my fault. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I mean, don't take that the wrong way as a yeah. realtor, but it was like I was on that side and it right. was like if a loan got snagged by a, an underwriter or something. Yeah. And look, don't get me wrong, we worked, I mean, you were commission. Uh, it, oh, yeah. it, it was oh, 100% commission. Yeah, same with us. So yeah, it's yeah. very so it's very stressful when right. it comes to man, you messing with my paycheck. You know whose fault it is, you right, know, and yeah. it's like I had nothing to do with his credit. You know, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or I had nothing to do that he didn't yeah. pay that bill or you know <laughs> that medical bill. He shouldn't have gone to whiskey. Yeah, he, he, shouldn't have, he, shouldn't have, he shouldn't have tapped out right, on, that, right. on that credit card. I'm sorry, I don't know what to tell you. He went from 720 to eight, yeah, eight you uh, know, uh, uh, 680 yeah. in, in less than a. I can't do that, but. 
that was the only thing uh, I loved working uh, though with, with, with you know people and helping out their financial situation. Right. It just uh, I couldn't like just the the title company and the you know the realtor and the all the it's moving a lot parts. Of, there's a lot of moving parts yeah. which I wouldn't work. Like I didn't even see a contract. Like I, I had to go take the class. She, my boy was like, "You just take it online." And the first sentence I, re- I read, I'm like. Pfft. What the hell are they talking about? Yeah. I gotta go take it. Go. <laughs> what? What is that? <laughs> yeah, right. What's a plot? Yeah, I'm not going, what? I don't know. I'll like... go fish on a plot. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> so I had to go take the class for six weeks or whatever it was, and, and then I had to take the test. And and I had friends who were really smart who took the test and didn't pass it the first time. Right. And like I said, it's it's timed and all stuff. And there's a, a book like it's 500 pages. Mm-hmm. You gotta learn all stuff. And I'm like. I was calling my friends who had taken it. I'm like, what do you got to learn? I said, everything, because you don't know what's going to pop up. Yep. And I passed both of them. I, I even asked, I'm like, are you sure? Mm-hmm. And the guy, he's like, he actually didn't even, I was so nervous, I skipped two on the test. I didn't even know. I just hit finish. And the time was running out. <laughs> and I don't think I passed. C, but I, yeah, C, C. C. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't great in school. So, I mean, I'll tell you a funny story with C's. I, I was in, I was taking a class with Brother Martin uh-huh. at the time. I didn't make it out. Great school, met a lot of, Great guys out there, but I was uh, <laughs> in a geometry class and I forgot to do my homework. Uh-huh. And it's got, the teacher's Mr. Piazza. I'll never forget this. And and we were supposed to fill in blanks of all this stuff. Well, I just started filling in band names because I I I think he just kind of just walk around and see that it was something was filled in. Right. And he stops with me. Well, Mr. Mangiapane, the. Uh Obtuse rectangle is Aerosmith. That's very interesting. And the whole class, I'm like, oh, man. I had, like, Def Leppard and all these things written now. Those just passed by. And That's like, hilarious. Yeah. So, <laughs> a 90-degree angle is Def Leppard? And I'm like, uh, I don't know. Dude, I had a funny geometry story, too. And I'm going to put I'm gonna put you out on – I'm going to put somebody out on Front Street. She's a teacher, too, Summer. I'm not going to say her last name. But she used to sit behind me in class, and it was uh, Coach Suttles' class, geometry. I was – I'd finish my test 15 minutes because I – I'm good at math. Very good at math. I don't math. Reading? Mm. No. Nah, I can't. I can't do it. Like last night I was doing that uh, benefit and they said, you want the uh, teleprompter? I said, hell no. They said, well, how are you going to know what you're going to say? It's right here. Yeah. Really? And then they hit the camera and they go and they go, no, he really no. If I got to read anything, I'm right. going to screw it up. Right. I'm going to screw it all up because so I can't read. you do read. all your dubs and stuff, you just free, you just go. We free ball it, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. <laughs> free well, ball I have, it. I have an idea in my head yeah. and I kind of like want to match it to like a movie right. scene. Yeah. And then I'll go in there and I'll just turn, okay, well, in here, this is where we actually do the right. dubs. And I just I turn the mic on and look at the thing and just go, I'm going to go to the camp. <laughs> and then boom, that's it. It just writes itself yep. after that, you know? So Because I, I remember we talked about that and I was like, you kind of have that written down because it's just so much. You know, like when you do the weather guy. Yeah. You know, the yeah. Weather, no. And, and all that stuff. You know. Well, the weather guy, I'll, I'll <laughs> like be driving in my car and then I'll think of a joke. Like I'll hear the weather guy on the thing and he goes, uh-huh. oh, it's going to be breezy this right. weekend or something yeah. like that. So I'm trying to think of like jokes that I could Your do. Your do list yeah. ready. Yeah. So I'll grab so I'll grab my thing and I'll be like, uh, we're going to get a eight inches tonight, but uh, I, I, I disappointed her and I'll only give her <laughs> two. You know, like, <laughs> and it goes, and the reason for that is because uh, I didn't drink enough whiskey last <laughs> night, you know, or something like that. And I would say it in my phone and right. then I'll just put it down and then I'll go back to it you know when I got time right. and I'm putting it together and I'll just get my jokes from there and right. kind of spin them off from there it's so. good stuff man I, I stuff. mean and you have to like I have a little notepad on, on the side of my bed and right. I'll wake up in the middle of the night and I'll down. write something down and yeah. my wife thinks I'm weird but it's like well that's just, I think we're all weird if yeah. you're in this business I think everyone's a little strange well I, I, I tell when I go out on talks and stuff I'll tell people that I'll be like look Embrace your weirdness because yeah. that's what. Look, I'm, I get to sit here today on a podcast and talk to you because yeah. I'm weird. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> you know like, what I'm like, saying. So, like, being a realtor is is weird for me because I'm I'm been a musician for so long, right? Just, and I've I've just kind of lived that life that mm-hmm. is just, it's not your normal life, right? You know? So, I, I do enjoy doing the real estate stuff. Well, yeah. I find that uh, very talented people, you know, musicians, uh, artists or whatever, they're very good uh, salesmen. You know what I'm saying? They, they they personify themselves very well. They're likable people. Right. I, um, when I was in the banking industry, I did fairly well. My numbers were good because right. people, I, I got down on people's level. Yeah. You know, I could talk to a doctor about his finances, but I can also talk to the teacher about her finances. You right. know, I could dumb myself down that way. And um, well, I can do that really easy. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> dumb yourself down or make yourself smart, <laughs> the, vice versa. I don't know what to make myself smart for, but I can definitely dump myself down a bit. No, but it's we're, we're likable people. We're, yeah. We got stage presence. You know, right. it's just um, people can. 
I guess people can let their guard down in front of us. Yeah. You know, I think um, we're easy to talk to kind mm -hmm. of people. You know, approachable very approachable yeah we don't yeah. we're not we're not shut off and i mean you you uh you show that that way with you with your daughter too on tiktok and facebook the bad dad jokes yeah I, how did that get, start like well, i you, did that like five years ago and it didn't pop off on me and i walked away from well, it here's what it, so um a buddy of mine who does is in real estate he's like videos the next he's like you really start doing videos for your real estate mm -hmm. i've done a few i'm like well i just wasn't used to the camera so i was posting stuff just you know, like a meme or something the year before. I'm like, you know what? January 1st, I'm going to start doing videos of this stuff just to kind of get used to the camera. Mm -hmm. And I, I had um, someone gave me a calendar of bad jokes or whatever. So the first couple of days, I just read them, you mm -hmm. know. And then I got Molly to do one one time, and I just got all this feedback of, it's so great. You know, it's awesome, you and your daughter. And mm -hmm. then, so we did one, we did another one. And I'm like, you think we can do the whole year? This is COVID. This mm -hmm. is last year. So... She, well, I started watching y'all. It was uh, two, it was at the end of 2019 when you kind of started yeah. it, and then you you got one for Christmas, I think it yeah, was, it was, or something. Yeah, it, was, it, was it was a, a whole, whole calendar. Yeah, and you said I'm gonna I'm gonna commit to doing it yeah. the whole year. But <laughs> it was also like if you commit to something, people are gonna people will catch on. And they stick appreciate to it, that they, too, but they stick to it. So kind of like so like if you would have probably kept doing it, you probably would have been okay. Right, right. It's um, and you just kind of weed out who wants to see it and who doesn't want to see it. Yeah. So. You know, then I started posting on TikTok, and it wasn't until like a, one joke that my I had a hundred followers for like three or four months. I'm mm -hmm. like, I how do you even get followers on TikTok? I'm not a TikTok guy. I hate TikTok, I, dude. but I can't figure it out. But you're on it because you're on it for you. I'm, I'm on. I will I, crack that goddamn I, code. I, 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 will. Honest, I don't even know what the for you page is. I still, I, I still don't know what that I is. I got either. this morning, and my daughter's on it. I'm like, how is she going to for you page? I don't know. <laughs> but I had one joke I had, and it hit like six hundred something thousand views or whatever, and it got me like thirteen thousand followers in like a month. Right. I'm kind of still hovering there. I don't really make an effort. I just do the joke and I post it. On yeah, it. yeah. Whatever but, happens, happens. But the, so my buddies like do the real. So I just started doing it really just to kind of get in front of the camera. Yeah. And then everyone just started chiming in, and my daughter's she's an outgoing personality. She's yeah. funny. She gets recognized. Like she's at a volleyball game, right? And she, you know, bad dad joke. You know, she was jogging in the neighborhood one time. Luckily, I know the guy's like, "Hey, Molly," and yeah. she, she came in and told me, "I was like." Was the guy bald head? I said, I know him. But next time, just keep running <laughs> yeah, faster. Just keep running faster. Keep run faster. <laughs> yeah. We were doing a show in Baton Rouge um, right before. It was right around Mardi Gras. And I was uh, at La Berge mm -hmm. with some friends. And somebody walks in and yells, Joey. Well, usually, if somebody knows me from the band, it's Wolf. So we're playing that night. And my buddy's like, do you know that person? I'm like, and I looked. I said, no. I'm like, so I'm, I'm, I'm leaving. And I'm like, Joey, I turn around. And the wife comes up. She's like, we just love your bad dad jokes. I'm in Baton Rouge. She's like, my, my, yeah. there's the cameras on the yeah. same. What? Yeah. And she's like, can my husband and I take a picture with you? I'm like, uh, what? Yeah. From the bad dad? Yeah, exactly. Like, so we took a picture. I'm like, and after I'm like, you know, I'm in the Chewies. I don't yeah. know. If that's it's like, we're yeah. coming to see you tonight. We just really enjoy the bad dad jokes. So right. we kept it. We did the whole year. And then like there, there were times where. I knew she. I wasn't gonna see her for three or four days, so uh -huh. I had to film three or four in a row. Right. Like I've got, I've got about three right now that are good to go because she's busy and <laughs> right, stuff. So right, right. I'm, I'm pretty good right now until I got about three or four loaded on here, and I will do one after. And I'll do one with my dad every once in a while, but everyone likes Molly. They, right. They, they tune in to see that, and the last one she did, she gave me the joke. Everyone kept asking to do it, so. She's been really good about it. It's been yeah. a, it's been a kind of cool bonding thing. Like, I it didn't is. think it would be. It yeah. is. Um and, and it, I I love seeing that because I have uh that's your only yeah, that's wait, your wait, only kid? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I mean you you yeah. that's daddy's little girl. Yeah, absolutely. Um I got three little girls. <laughs> I know. So I gotta <laughs> yeah. spread the love some kind yeah. of way. And they all got different personalities. So my oldest one, she doesn't even wanna be involved in anything. Another. Daddy, leave me alone. I don't yeah. wanna be in the camera, I don't wanna do nothing. Okay, cool. The middle one, Meg, that's the one that does all the lip sync and the dancing with mm -hmm. me. She's like, Daddy, give me the camera. Let's go. Right. I'm ready to go viral, yeah. whatever. And then my youngest one, she's the one that destroys the camera. She's just <laughs> she's just the little Tasmanian devil. But, uh, yeah, you have different bonds with all of them. But I love, I love seeing that because I can relate to it because right. it's a girl, you know? Yeah. And it's like my... Uh, Dude, I always, I mean, if you were anything like me, uh, you want the boy, you know, my partner, you know, but yeah. now that I got three girls, right. bro, I don't think I could have, yeah. if I would have had a boy, I would have kicked his ass by now. Well, you know what? <laughs> I, <laughs> Probably. I, I actually, I did want a girl and for selfish reasons is because I was a musician in Salem and most of boys activities on weekends and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, so I would have missed a lot of Travel, well, like all of that. Yeah. yeah. So 
I I can make like ninety percent of ninety five percent of her stuff because she runs cross country. She so does more basketball, during the day, more during the week. Yeah, and basketball, stuff. and now she's running track. And those things are usually after school. Occasionally, they're in the weekend. And look, if we're somewhere, I mean, her cross country meets. Jesus, I didn't know when she got in cross country. Like you got to be there at six. I'm like what? <laughs> in like, the morning. What, yeah. yeah, in the morning. <laughs> so on those, on those, and look, in I don't, think, I don't think I miss. If we're coming back in town, like sometimes we'll go from one city to the next city. Yeah. And come back. But if we're coming back, I just wouldn't drink. I just, you know, that's, the, you know, I'm like, I, right. it's just too early. But right. I, I didn't miss any of them. I'd go to all of them, you know. Um, but she's been a trooper, man. I mean, like, I don't know if I was that age. I've that. Oh, no. I, if if I had a camera yeah. in my face and my dad was trying to be goofy with me, I'd be like, turn that crap But off. her basketball coach has jumped in. He loves them. He's jumped yeah. in. A few, he's jumped in. Matter of fact, before COVID, we had it lined up where I was going to go to the school. And over the loudspeaker, I was going to do a bad dad joke with the school uh-huh. every once in a while. Embarrass her? Yeah. <laughs> Cause he tells them during during PE, he tells oh, really? tell the bad dad joke. <laughs> like all the girls at her class and her school, right? Her school, no, right? You know, I've done a couple with her and a couple of the players in the basketball team, so it's mm-hmm. kind of you know. Isn't it something that that's so simple and so silly can like just brighten people's day? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like like that like. The, and that's why I told her that's why we do it. Like, yeah. You know, you know it's and that, why I play music. Exactly. You know? that, that's why I do it. Like people ask me, they're like, "Man, you must get paid millions of dollars to do what you do." I'm like, "No. I mean, I, I do I, I do well for myself, right. but I'm like, it's not. That's not why I do it. Because if you're doing it for money, other right. if you're doing it for other reasons other than you want to do it, right." Why are you doing it? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like you said, been. like you said in the band, if you're not going to put 110% in this band, I don't want you in the band. Right. You know, so yeah. it's the same thing. If uh, if I'm not feeling that dub or that parody 150%, right. then I'm not going to do it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If I hit the lottery, I'd still go play the gig next week. Hell yeah. that's what I like to do. Hell yeah. I'd still, be, I'd still be in my studio tinker yeah. tanking, you know. Yeah. And that's what makes like, um, you ever seen the Defiant Ones uh, with um, uh, Dr. Dre? No. Uh-huh. Okay, so it's, it tells the whole story of Dr. Dre yeah. about how he went from the ghetto yeah. all the way to selling beats, okay, right. and becoming a billionaire, yeah. okay, over a 35-year period, right. okay? And one of the things that they do over there is they he just, he stayed consistent, even though any, everybody was like, you're weird, you're weird, you're right. weird. You know, he would just constantly listen to music, constantly listen to music. Not let anybody tell them it's stupid. Right. Not let anybody get you know get them down. He's like, okay, it's stupid, but I love doing it. Right. And look, look what happened, you know. Yeah. And I can't stand when people come in after the fact. Like, just for instance, you doing the bad dad joke. Let's just say it pops off, and you become this big celebrity guy, yeah, and you're on right. your way to do that. Uh-huh. But what I'm saying is, is that. You got these people at the bottom, and they come to the top, and they just start trolling you. Oh, da, 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 da. and right. I'm like, you don't understand. It, 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 you think you've only seen me for what a year? Right. Yeah. You don't know no. that I was eight years old doing this crap. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. And I just I've been po- it popped right. off. You know. Right. And I, you know, so when I see you doing this stuff and and stay constant at yeah. it and never give up, yeah. and you got that one person that comes up to you, I want to take a picture with you. Yeah. I'm like, damn. Well, all kinds that's of, worth it. You yeah, know? I mean, I get, it's you know, towards the end of the year, I kept telling Molly, "Oh, we can do it next year." Like I'd say it on the camera, and people like, "Oh, y'all got to keep doing it." Yeah. I'd, have, I'd have tons of people chime in. People, I have people message me all the time jokes. Just, yeah, just to, they message say me this. jokes and say, "Yeah, here's one for you." Right, people I don't know. Uh huh. That just will hit me up and say, "Here's a joke." Yeah, you know, I'm like, man, all the people that we're reaching that just get a that enjoy it. Yeah, and it takes us literally. I'm kind of like you. Like I don't. There's no two takes when right. I do it. Like if I mess up with something, I say I mess up, yeah. and I'm that guy. Like right. I'll, I'm a blooper guy. Yeah. I love bloopers. Man. Oh, that's I post a, more of my bloopers than I do the good to stuff. To me, that's the great stuff, yeah. man. And the Cannonball Run is probably better than. Oh, I love Cannonball Run. Yeah, the, yeah. yeah I mean, you can take these bleeds yeah. and show yeah. <laughs> these, these bleeds. bleeds. <laughs> See, that's, I mean, that, <laughs> that that that's a fun part of you know making those movies and stuff. Right. Like that, is the outtakes, right? You know? Like being in the band, the outtakes is us hanging out and being on the bus uh-huh. and. All of the fun stuff we do before right. and after, just making each other laugh. I mean, crying, laughing over stupid stuff. That's the outtakes that people don't see. Right. That, that's what, you know. And I mean, I tell people, I say, we could put a camera in here filming us doing the dubs. That's funnier than the dub itself. Yeah, because all the because mess Because we're ups. working it out. We're, yep. we're, you know, we're trying to get to the, the punchline, the yeah. joke. We're building it. Yep. And as we're building it, we're getting way raunchy. And that's yeah. some funny stuff. But we're like, oh, we need to tone it down. Yep. You know, it's just funnier than the original. But uh, but that's what makes it mad. And that's what I tell people. It's like, that's why I do it. Right. It's not for money. It's not for no, fame. It's not, not for all. any of that crap. Because 
if the, all this goes away tomorrow, I'm still going to have this in my closet and I'm going to invite people to come on to yep. my podcast because I love talking to people and I love I mean, learning if, the stories if, of if people. If the Chewies ended tomorrow, I just, I'd find, I'd get some of the players and just start playing. Right. It's great to play in front of a lot of people. Don't mm-hmm. get me wrong. That's fantastic. Right. But I've been an original man too. And I've played in front of two people, you know, and, it, you know, it, it's not great. No. But you still, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, think so, about it. Lady yeah. Gaga was playing oh, at yeah. a ballroom with two people well, at you, one point in her life. You, you see know? all these things, and it's literally, you know, I was watching. I forgot who the band was, but like literally, they were playing. Well, so three doors down, mm-hmm. those guys. They from Mississippi. Huh? Yeah. So th- I, I was in an original band with the drummer Mark right now and singer for Category Six. Bill, okay. And we had a, an original band called Tom's House. Well, we they had sent us a demo. We were pretty. We had sold out the House of Blues in New Orleans. We were doing pretty well. All original stuff, and they sent us a demo of Superman, and I'm like, it's it's pretty good, but we never got around to getting them to open. Yeah, we wound up playing with them in uh, where they're from, but Biloxi or so, uh-huh. that area. And at the time, Brad, who's the is the singer now, was drumming, and when we left, the PA kept cutting out. And then we had all kind of issues, like, oh man, we can't drive. Mm-hmm. And then we were doing a tour with uh, Cowboy Mouth, and they got on the bill, and we're playing with them in Birmingham. Well, they had just gotten signed. And they just finished doing that CD that with Superman, the right? Thing. Well, uh, Kryptonite, right? Yeah. Yep. And they had hired a drummer when they went into studio. When they went and recorded the album, they got a drummer, Brad, front of the band. But he was coming off the stage and tripped over the microphone. The microphone stand comes crashing down. We're like, oh man, mm. these, these poor guys, you know. We hung out with them a little after and talking because we were going to Atlanta with Cabo Mouth, and they were going back uh, home to I think mix get the mix the record, right? You know, it's how old I am. I walk into like a warehouse records and tapes and they're plastered all <laughs> over the place. I mean, it's three doors down stuff. Three doors down, duck and, and run, loser, all those well, songs. When we, when we played with them, one of the guys in Cabo, I said, look, you need to stay friends with these guys because the guy who signed them has points off the record. So the more I have to make it, he's going to push that freaking band. Right. He's gonna, and sure enough, man, I mean, I've seen a video on MTV. Yeah. And I'm, I'm like, I just played with these guys. <laughs> And the singer was tripping coming off the stage. Right. And I felt bad for him. And right. now I feel bad for me because I'm watching yeah. him. Isn't that crazy? Uh, yeah, Isn't that crazy? He, he, it's just breaks, man. You get the breaks sometimes. He, our third album was produced by Tim Summer, Sauce at the House of Blues in L.A. He produced a little band called Hootie and the Blowfish. No, he was an A&R guy. Oh, just that band. He was an A&R guy that signed Hootie and the Blowfish with the cracked rearview mirror. Uh-huh. So he came and saw us in L.A. Which his- sold... A gazillion, a minute, yeah. <laughs> so he comes in, flies in, and does our third CD, and it's like, "Are y'all gonna be the next Hootie's?" Blah blah blah. None. Yeah. You know. Our next album we did with Dave Fortman, former Ugly Kid Joe uh-huh. guitar player. Yeah. And he produced Twelve Stones. Right. He's worked with some major national acts. We we got he hooked us up with his manager in L.A. We went out to did some showcases at the Viper Room and stuff. And wow. Had some labels come out, and uh, you know, just never. You know, yeah. Our first album, speaking of one hit wonders, I love you, Mark Miller. He was in Dead Eye Dick, right? You don't eat, yeah. Eat, so like he, the bone. He, he produced it. So like all these, like we're looking at, like we it was so close all these you right. know times. That and song was in Dumb and Dumber too. Like, yeah, that's right, that's probably getting come out. Yeah, probably, probably getting still paid, paid still yeah, on that. Still getting paid. Yeah. So <laughs> we just came so close, you know, to to getting there and just uh, so you know, you know, like one day you're in front of 10 people. Right. So I could always envision, especially after you play with three rows down, that you're playing in front of nobody and the next thing you know, you're playing stadium. So I could see it right. happen. You, once you know, they tell you, once you can see it, yeah. you know, I saw it, it just rolled over to the Chiwi. So yeah. it wasn't 10,000, it's a thousand people, <laughs> which is great. You know I mean? You know, Look, man. I, I can't complain at all yeah the position i i I wound up in well i mean yeah you you, life takes you through different many journeys hills everything and like you you end up where you're supposed to be i think everything happens for a reason like life's you know like a book it's chapters you go through chapters you know of your life you have bad chapters you have good chapters you have not so good but at the end it's uh they live happily ever after i I hope so i think so i I hope so i think like (laughs) i think everything happens for a reason we're getting a little trippy now, man. Oh, really? Yeah, you want to kiss? <laughs> <laughs> again, no. again? No, again, again. <laughs> we weren't rolling these cameras the whole time. <laughs> no, we were. We, oh, were. we were. Yeah. I'm uh, I'm so straight, I eat my boudin from, you know, the middle out, you know. <laughs> 
Well, look, um, we gonna since you're the bad dad that. joke of the future, and I'm the look. bad dad joke of the past. Yeah, I want to do some bad dad jokes. All right, let's do some. And look, look, we're gonna we have to be serious, and we have to like try to not laugh. Okay. I might know a lot of these. Okay. Okay. So we're gonna edit it. We're gonna put like if you laugh, it's gonna be a point. Okay. Look how old I am. Though. Right, I, yeah. I, 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 look, I ain't lying to you. Look. <laughs> Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Well, we pro- we're probably the same age. Rock it's gotta star. be. Is, I'm, are you, I'm, I'm probably I'm, older. I'm 49. Oh, I'm forty. I'm gonna be forty four this year. Okay, well, no, nah, you you almost you almost the grand century, half yeah. century. Yeah, man. Oh, but I try man. I try and stay in shape and and uh, so I can still move around on stage. So I don't so I don't look like I'm almost fifty. <laughs> you know, I I, I, I on some of these last night. All right, you, you want to go first? Yeah. yeah. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Okay, let me see. All right, this, I'm, I'm going to try to go, like, just real bland, and I'm going to try to save the good ones for later, okay? okay. All right, so you got a good one. I got 391 up. written Oh, no, I, got, so I, got, I probably I got, got, like, 10. That okay, I, yeah, to well, my top 10. Okay, yeah. All right, so. All right. If I know it, do you want me to say it? Yeah, know, yeah, yeah, if you know I, it. Do, I, I mean, do you've it. done this for a year, so yeah, I probably I, regurgitated <laughs> something uh, uh, via the Google. These are just good. I laughed at these out loud okay, like, yeah, when I said them. So, all right, so. What did zero tell eight? Nice belt. Oh, God. <laughs> ah. All right. <clears throat> All right, let's see. Oh, okay. What do you call a pony with a sore throat? A pony with a sore throat. I'm... <laughs> uh, um, a little ass claw. Uh, you got a little horse. <laughs> little, <laughs> little horse. <laughs> little horse. Yeah, I'm trying to get corny. Like I'm, I'm yeah. going down deep yeah. into my corny, uh, yeah. my corny bag. All right, here we go. Yeah, you probably know all of these, man. I might, I'm so, uh, all, right, I might. all right. So last night I was shopping, man. I was on uh, Amazon and I ordered a chicken and an egg. Oh man, I, I've heard this. Not... What is it? I don't know. I'll let you know. <laughs> I knew it. I didn't. <laughs> I couldn't do that with my daughter, so I didn't have that one written down anyway. All right, let's see. Um, All right. Let's see. All right. How does a penguin build his house? How does a penguin build his house? Penguin, tuxedo. Um, how does he build his house? He glues it together. <laughs> no. no? No, 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 not good. All right. Oh, wait, let, let me do another one then. Let, right, let me go, go back to that. Okay. Which city do, ten, do dentists like to visit? I don't even know if this one's any good. Yeah. Which city do dentists Cavity like? Falls. Las Vegas. That oh! was good, though, too. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> Sometimes there's more than one answer. Like yeah. my, da- my daughter said a couple of answers that were not correct, but... Better than the answers. <laughs> like, that was good. That should have been the answer. Speaking of cavity falls, that's gravity falls. <laughs> I've been reading a book about anti gravity. Oh, yeah, you can't put it down. <laughs> Man, you winning. Yeah, he's the he's the king. He's the king. All right. God dog it. I didn't write that one down. I remembered that one yeah. from reading it this morning. I just heard it. All right. Let me, let me do this one then. Right. You probably know this. Right. You got to know this one. All right. <laughs> 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 What's Whitney Houston's favorite type of coordination? Hand eye. Hand eye. I knew something with that that line. Dude, when I read that, I was like, "Oh my god, that's so funny." Man. Let's see. I mean, I got some really good ones. Get, get the cornier, the better. Okay. What did the janitor say when he hopped out of the closet? Broom, broom. No, no. Supplies. <laughs> <laughs> Supplies. <laughs> Oh my god. That's so bad. Yeah, that's they're bad. They're all bad. Oh, they are all bad. <laughs> they're not good. They're called bad dad jokes for a reason. What do, you, what do you call a fish with no eye? <laughs> oh. <laughs> what do you call a fish with two knees? Toonie fish. Yeah! <laughs> uh, I, he's on fire, folks. He's on fire. All right, wait, wait, wait about this one. Dude, if you know this one, come on, man. This has got to be this is a good one. How did Darth Vader know what Luke got him for Christmas? 
How did Darth Vader know what Luke got him for Christmas? I don't know how. He felt his presence. <laughs> 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 All right, hold on, I got one here. Oh. You know it to be true. <laughs> Luke. Luke. Yeah, let's see. What do you call a bird that drinks a lot of liquor? A bird that drinks a lot of liquor? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I don't know. An alcoholic. Oh, an alcoholic. <laughs> You know, I, I saw something like that, too. I said, so somebody in this room is possessed by an owl. Somebody in this room is possessed by an owl? Yeah. Yeah, what's that? Who? <laughs> what? You. Uh, who? who? <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah, that's stupid. That's stupid. You know, my I, I always sing Oasis uh, in public, and my daughter always tells me to stop. You know what I tell her? Right. Oh, I say, what? maybe. <laughs> I was just a little bit of Wonder Wall on that. Yeah. <laughs> I said maybe. <laughs> hey, how about this? What does a priest say before he treats the church for insects? Okay. What does a priest say before he treats the church for insects? Bless you, my babette. He says, let us spray. Oh, let us <laughs> spray. Let us spray. <laughs> oh, boy. What do, you call, uh, what do you call a man who can't stand? Neil. Neil. There you go. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> What's red and bad for your teeth? A brick. <laughs> <laughs> How about this? What is, uh, I guess we can edit. What is a Chinese woman's favorite day of the year? What is a Chinese uh, woman's favorite day of the year? Yeah. Um, the International Rice Festival. <laughs> Erection Day. <laughs> I don't know if we can use that. Yeah, huh? We'll try. <laughs> <laughs> What's worse than ants in your pants? What? Uncles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, I'm catching up. Oh, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> oh, man. That's... Oh, boy. What do you do in a, a French bathroom? In a French bathroom? I don't know what you do. European. <laughs> oh, I got it. Or you make wee wee. I got one of those somewhere around oh, here. Oh, you make wee wee? You make wee wee? Mm hmm. Let's see, I had one of those. These are so corny. Damn it, I do have like. So I had, Why I do you on. never hear a pterodactyl go to the bathroom? Because it pees silent. Yep, that's yep. it. Yep. What time do astronauts eat? What time do yeah, what astronauts what time, eat? What time do they eat? Um, moon o'clock. Launch time. That would have worked. Time. That would have been good, though. Launch yeah. time. I'm trying to get real corny. How about this one? Why did the prisoner with a stutter. Get let out of jail early. Why? <laughs> Wait, maybe again. Why did the Why did the prisoner with a stutter get let out of jail early? What do prisoners say that would make them stutter over and over again? Uh, let me out of here. Let me out of here. Let me out. He kept no. saying, "Let me out of here." He couldn't finish his sentence. <laughs> That's just as bad <laughs> as the one-legged lady walking working at IHOP. That's just oh, right. <laughs> I know. Look, I got to uh, look. Look, they're all jokes, right? I, yeah. you know what I mean, it. like, like his his one, I, I think, is pretty good. Um, how did the blonde break her arm while raking leaves? Okay, how did the blonde break? Because blondes are, you know, that's a stereotype. Oh, I they're know. not really. I know. I'm kind of pushing the envelope. Yeah, yeah, one. no, but that's good. Okay, so uh, uh, I don't know why she fell out of the tree. <laughs> Probably, probably with the uh, the vacuum cleaner, huh? <laughs> well, those are so cheesy, man. Oh, man. All right. Well, look, I'm a, uh, we do pod decks too, man. That, that's they getting corny. So I'm, what we usually do, I get yes. everybody to pick one out of here, and we just it's it's a random question. Okay. And then I answer it, and you answer it. So uh, I'll let you pick. Just pick whatever. You read the question, and we're gonna we'll wrap up the show from there. Let's see. What do you think is the most unpleasant, unpleasant sounding word? We did that. Pick another one. We did that. That's the actual same one we did. Not okay. new last week. <laughs> they picked that one. 
Is that all the same one? What is something you get wrong almost every time you do it? Something I do wrong every time I do it. Probably make rue. Make rue. The rue's not yeah, good? The rue's not. The problem is with making a rue with me, I have no patience. And that's you need patience to make the rue. My wife will sit there and she'll stir for an hour because she's like, that's the only way that's going to get done. <laughs> I'm like, no, I got 15 minutes. My dad makes one in 15 minutes and he rocks it hard. Yeah, but you can't do I'll it. burn the crap out no. of it. What about you? Or you want to do a different one? I'll pick do another different. one. Yeah, okay, yeah, all right. Yeah. I'm going to pick one for you. Let's see. Pod Dex interview deck, second edition. Serious question. Uh-oh. Do you count your steps? I do not count my steps. You don't? Nope. I do sometimes. You do. Sometimes. If I'm going upstairs, I count. Uh, I have 14 stairs at my house. Do you really? Yes, and I know it on the dot. And I start counting when I go up the stairs, oh, yeah, and I yeah. hit 14 every, every single time at the top. Story for the last five years, I've never counted. You time. never counted? Never it counted must be an OCD ever. thing or Maybe something. So. I don't know. Maybe it's just all the voices. I, mean, I tell everybody there's 35 people that live in here, and yeah. every now and then a voice will come out. Yeah! You know, they'll just come out every <laughs> yeah. now and then. But, man, Joey, I appreciate dude, you coming really, on, man. Dude, I'd love this to come awesome. back anytime. Yeah, man. And uh, tell everybody. Plug, yeah. yeah, plug. Chewy's at uh, Lenny's this week in Homa. Okay. And that's on the March 19th or uh, 20th? It's, it's the Friday a, it's or the Saturday? Saturday. So it's, it's, the 20th. 20th. it's the 20th. It's the 20th. Yeah. Okay. So uh, early start time. I think we start like 9 o'clock because 8.30 because of the the COVID, COVID stuff, yeah. But we, uh, y'all gonna be inside or outside? We're still? outside. Yeah, okay, so uh, nice, fresh, corona-free air. Yep. So Go come check out, out my come boys. Out and sing the Chewies yep. this Saturday night. Plug y'all. your your real estate stuff too, man. Um, just a, a rock and roll realtor. Mm-hmm. And it, on uh, Facebook, yeah, rock and roll realtor on Facebook. Um, check out the dad bad Joe. Yeah, you just follow me, Joey. Man, if you can spell it, Joey yeah. Manjapani. Find me. Japani. I'm on Facebook, He's Instagram. From Durag. <laughs> uh, Instagram, I'm Rock and Roll Realtor, and TikTok, I'm a Rock, rock okay. and Roll Realtor. But just just Joey Mangiapane on Facebook and check out uh, Bad Dad Joke 415 rolled 415, out today. I know, man. That's freaking, uh, yeah. you committed to it. Yeah. You, you I think I'm going to get to at least 500 and then we'll kind of we'll take a kinda, vacation. Well, we'll see what happens. Yeah, no, I mean, keep it rolling, bro. You yeah. keep me laughing. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, it's a good time. <laughs> well, we'll see you next time. Okay, and, uh, you know, I'm going to try to make it out to, I got to be a VIP, though, if I go. Absolutely. All right. All, all right. right. Good all good right. You too, man. Thanks, we'll man. see you next time on the DJ Red Podcast. Yeah, later. Later. them.